Good morning. Welcome to Daily Prayer on Thursday, the 8th of July. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender. Thank you for joining me today from a very grey uh, Northampton, but I trust that wherever you are, the sun may be shining. And uh, I trust you have a good day ahead, which will hopefully be willing and be more centred on the Lord as we begin it in prayer now. So let's bow our heads and pray together. Some verses from Psalm 18. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The cords of death encompassed me. The torrents of perdition assailed me. The cords of Sheol entangled me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress I called upon the Lord, to my God I cried for help. From his temple he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. Then the earth reeled and rocked, the mountains also of the mountains trembled and quaked, because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils, and devouring fire from his mouth, glowing coals flamed forth from him. He bowed the heavens and came down. Thick darkness was under his feet. He rode on a cherub and flew. He came swiftly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering around him, his canopy thick clouds dark with water. Out of the brightness before him there broke through his clouds hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the Most High uttered his voice. And he sent out his arrows and scattered them. He flashed forth lightnings and routed them. Then the channels of the sea were seen, and the foundations of the world were laid bare. At your rebuke, O Lord, of the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He reached down from on high. He took me. He drew me out of mighty waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity. But the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He recompensed me. Thanks be to God for his word. Let's pray together. Father God, we come to you this day rejoicing in all your goodness and mercy. You created the world and you continue to preserve it. We thank you for the dependable, dependability of nature and time. Thank you for your everlasting faithfulness. Thank you for the gift of this new day. Thank you for the rest of the night that's passed and for the opportunities that are ahead of us this day. Please be with us and help us to know your peace, your strength, your love and the presence of your Spirit with us at each moment of the day. And as we thank you for the constancy of your caring love, we confess that our lives are often careless and sometimes loveless. When our love for you is weak, when our concern for those in need is inadequate, when our giving is meagre and thoughtless, when we are self-centred, heartless, or distrusting of the generosity of others, or when we lack the vision and dedication to bring help and care to the hungry, the homeless, the displaced or the refugee. Lord, we ask for your mercy and for your forgiveness this day. So may Almighty God have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, give us time to amend our lives and bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Continuing to read to the book of the Acts of the Apostles, today in chapter 10 we continue to read the story of Peter and Cornelius, beginning to read at the 17th verse. Now while Peter was greatly puzzled about what to make of the vision he had seen, suddenly the men sent by Cornelius appeared. They were asking for Simon's house and were standing by the gate. 
They called out to ask whether Simon, who was called Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Look, three men are searching for you. Now get up, go down, and go with them without hesitation, for I have sent them. So Peter went down for the bed and said, I am the one you are looking for. What is the reason for your coming? They answered, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man, who is well spoken of by the whole Jewish nation, was directed by a holy angel to send for you to come to his house and to hear what you have to say. So Peter invited them in and gave them lodging. The next day he got up and went with them, and some of the believers from Joppa accompanied him. The following day they came to Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. On Peter's arrival, Cornelius met him and, falling at his feet, worshipped him. But Peter made him get up, saying, Stand up, I am only a mortal. And as he talked with him, he went in and found that many had assembled. And he said to them, You yourselves know that it is unlawful for a Jew to associate with or to visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone profane or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. Now, may I ask why you sent me? Cornelius replied, Four days ago at this very hour, at three o'clock, I was praying in my house when suddenly a man in dazzling clothes stood before me. He said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your arms have been remembered before God. Send therefore to Joppa and ask for Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying in the home of Simon the Tanner by the sea. Therefore I sent for you immediately, and you have been kind enough to come. Now all of us are here in the presence of God to listen to all that the Lord has commanded you to say. Thanks be to God for his word. In a sense, this story has had two uh, separate acts which are now brought together and about to be brought together in great power as we'll hear God's word read tomorrow. God speaks to Cornelius, God appears to Peter, and now their two stories, as it were, collide and produce great harmony of God's purposes. And that's wonderful to see how God directs both their affairs in this situation. But the most important thing to note is this, that for both of them, they needed to step out of their comfort zones. And in particular, Peter, uh, who was forbidden to associate with a Gentile, has to, as it were, go against all he's been taught, all that he's learned, in order that God's purposes might be fulfilled within him. Peter wasn't to know what was about to happen. He, was, he had a growing realisation but the long-term implications of the mission to those outside the house of Israel, as it were, to, to the Gentiles, was about to explode. And it all began with Peter's understanding of who God calls into his family. And as the Apostle Paul would later say, there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for all are one in Christ Jesus. The challenge for you and me is to know that when God calls us, he called us first to obey. He doesn't ask us to interpret. He doesn't ask us to question. He asks us to do what he said. God spoke to Peter and said, go, go without hesitation. Delayed obedience is no obedience. And so here and now, the challenge for you and I is what is God asking us to do without hesitation? Are we ready to obey? And are we ready to take a risk for God, stepping out of our comfort zones, in order that we may firstly be faithful to him and then leave the rest to God. Let's confess our faith together as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let's pray together for ourselves, for our world, and for those we know and love. Let's pray want to pray firstly today as we've been praying for our global Baptist family 
for the situation in Nigeria where 150 uh, children from a Baptist school have been abducted by Muslim extremists and we pray for their release, we pray for their safety and we pray for their families. Lord in your mercy hear our prayer. And as we are going through a wave of further increasing infections in our country at the moment and as the situation appears to be quite volatile with regards to the future we continue to pray for the NHS and for all key workers voicing our gratitude for those who serve us not least in the rollout of the vaccination program and we pray that God would prosper the work of their hands that as they continue to sacrifice and love and care for us that they may see the fruits of their labor and that our nation may become physically mentally spiritually safe and well lord in your mercy hear our prayer lord we continue to pray for the nation of india and as we pray father for those in that country who uh, are involved in extremism particularly hindu extremism father we pray that christian believers would continue to courageously follow jesus well we know that one extremist said that they were hoping to eradicate christianity by 2021 and whilst that's not going to happen father we pray for safety and protection for all christians for religious freedom for all in that country and we ask the Lord to thwart the work of those extremists. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then we pray for ourselves and for those we know and love in the moment of quiet prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you today and keep you safe until we meet again tomorrow to pray. Goodbye and God bless you.